Welcome to my garage. If you're watching this video, you want to learn how to hook up your drivers that you just bought for your inner monitors that you're doing at home so you can save like $1,000 on the entire process. Or you're like me and you just love arts and crafts for nerds. So I'm in the process, I've got like two or three orders. I'm in the process of hooking up some drivers, the electronics with the soldering and, and the, the, the Litz wires to make sure that we can get them going. So they're ready to load into my shells that I've 3D printed from the other videos that I've shown you guys. Um, so let's talk about what you're gonna need to have here for this step. You're gonna need a good soldering iron. And by good, I don't mean expensive, I mean good. I just use this Weller. It was really cheap, it was a 40 watt soldering iron, has a, a micro tip that it comes with. I've got a Hacko soldering station here with a 599B. What, with what looks like some copper colored steel wool, you just stab the soldering iron there and it cleans up your, your tip of your soldering iron for tinning, looks great. No oxidization on the solder whenever you do that. I've got some drivers, I've got Knowles, GV32830. These are quad drivers. The uh, resistor capacitor crossover network is soldered into them already when you get them. They're wonderful. If you're looking for a very quick quad driver setup, this is the only thing I can recommend. Um, they are relatively cheap and they are pretty rock solid. And uh, you know, they, they give what you need for 99% of people on a stage that want an in-ear monitor set up. You're going to be able to get a really great sound response out of these the way they come. I've got some Litz wire. This is made by a company called Estron, E-S-T-R-O-N. And uh, again, talking about the drivers while I talk about the Litz wire. This, these drivers, this Litz wire... And also the connectors, which I'm going to talk about now, the MMCX connectors, were all purchased online from a website called AliExpress.com. It's a great way to get things from China for really cheap, and uh, they can get it to you as fast or slow as you need. I always opt to pay about 15 bucks extra to use FedEx or DHL to get it there in a hurry. But you can even wait for the literal slow boat from China if you want. Um, and, and get it for really, really cheap. You're going to pay a lot less than you're going to pay for a ma from a major distributor. I haven't had any issues ordering from anything on AliExpress yet, personally. Um, but I'm not ordering clothing. I'm ordering DIY inner monitor components. <laughs> and I am told that if you buy clothes, they might come a little bit smaller than you expect. That being said, the main store that I use online on AliExpress is called SoundLink. And if you go to AliExpress and you look for that company, you'll find a lot of DIY in-ear monitor and hearing aid type components and products. Um, they are great. They've even, in the middle of the night, three in the morning, what, I don't know what time that is in, in mainland China, but they've like texted me, hey, are you happy? <laughs> are you, do you know, I mean, are you good with what we got? We, got, we noticed it came to you. So they're a great company. They work really hard to make sure you're happy. So I can fully recommend and endorse SoundLink, even though I'll never get a dollar from them. Um, that being said, what we're going to do now is we're going to get our, our drivers. We're going to prep them. We're going to tin everything. We're going to do all the hookups with the soldering. So the first step here with these drivers, if you look at them, and I'm only going to do one side today, because if you can do the left, you can do the right. With the drivers, on these Knowles GV drivers, these 3280s, or these 3230s, you're going to notice after you take it out of the bag, they are vented. There are tiny little holes on the base drivers. The first thing I do is I rip this yellow tinted tape right off of that driver. I just make sure that those holes are completely clear. You're going to have enough airspace inside of your inner monitor shell that you've made for there to be enough compensating air. But generally, you want to at least double the, the volume of the actual driver for the balanced armature driver shell, 
or the a balanced armature driver volume here. But that's never going to be a problem for you if you're if you're like me and you're building basically some some inner monitors for humans. <laughs> so it's good. Um, I just peel that right off. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this guy up to where I can get him hooked up with Litz cables. You'll notice I'm not using a uh, a set of helping hands. I'm actually using some dap wall putty, some white dap wall putty. Uh, I like this better. Helping hands, what I mean by that, helping hands is those little tiny alligator clips that you see online and you kind of have to cinch down and tighten everything up and make a perfect setup. This is so much more malleable and easy to use. I really like this setup. Um, and uh, the next thing I'm gonna do after this is I'm gonna get my Litz wires. I've kind of created a little jig here of one inch. So I like to take my cables and run it along that and use my, uh, my flush cutters to make sure that I've got about one inch. I'm gonna do a positive side. I'm gonna do a negative side here. And uh, of course you can measure this your, your own way that's, that's more comfortable for you. I'm just doing so many sets of these, I gotta do it easily. Um, and uh, now we tin, we tin everything. Before we get to tinning, I wanna talk a little about, a bit about the MMCX connector, which is this. So you've probably 3D modeled into your shell and your cap of your, your inner monitors, you've probably, your faceplate rather, you probably 3D modeled this shape into it, which is great. Um, you're gonna find with people with smaller ears that whatever way, if this was face, like for instance, if this was being plugged into a right ear, you're gonna wanna remove the bottom. If it was the left ear, you're gonna wanna remove the bottom. And the reason is it creates much more real estate. I'm gonna remove the left side, pretend this is the left side here, remove that that tab with my flush cutters here. The reason is, is that creates a lot more real estate for you to be able to situate your driver and your acoustic tubing network and your wiring. You're gonna, you're gonna trust me on that and I know. And another thing I like to do is to take my little connector here, my MMCX connector, I like to trim just a little bit off and create little stubs here. And that creates an, a little bit more real estate because as you know, after you worked with this a little bit, with these DIY inner monitors, it's really tough to get enough space to make everything hook up. Okay, so now that we've trimmed everything down, now we have to tin everything up. So I'm gonna start with the driver since it's hooked up to my DAP putty. My poster mounting putty, if you will. I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna work from left to right side on all the stuff you're gonna see here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solder the work, not the solder. Heat this up, give a little tiny bit of solder there. Heat this side up, a little bit of solder. And if you're curious about which side is which, with the, the highs or the small drivers to the, my left-hand side and the base to the right-hand side, the left side is the negative polarity, the right side is the positive polarity, as it's facing right now. So my next step is gonna be to hook up these Litz wire cables the left side is gonna be the negative side. Since I have blue and red, and red is gonna be my positive, blue is gonna be my negative. I'm gonna take my blue, I'm gonna hook it up to that left side. The first step I like to do is I like to put a blob of solder on the end of my iron. I like to grab my blue lead here. And use your fingers. Don't use a pair of needle nose pliers or something, just use your fingers. You'll, you'll learn later why that's important by doing it. But basically, what I've found is when I use my fingers, I don't create frays or problems. When I use pliers to pick these up, I create really weird cable frays. Clean my iron off. I'm gonna connect it right here to this negative lead. Sorry if you see my bald head.
Generally speaking, I count to two once I drop my iron, then I lift it, then I count to three, and then I let go of everything. Take my positive wire here. I'm gonna tin the end of it here with some solder, which means throwing a blob of my iron, run the cable through that blob of solder, clean my iron, drop it right here on the connection point. One, two, one, two, three. So in theory, yeah, those are hooked up really well. So this driver is, is hooked up on the driver's side. So now I've got to hook up the MMCX connector. I like to keep this thing mounted kind of just to this DAT putty. I like to connect it to the DAT putty, just kind of flat. And I'm working from left to right again. I'm going to tin this first with some solder, which means I'm just going to put a little tiny bit of solder on it. And this is where it gets really tricky. You don't want to bridge your solder. You don't want to bridge it from the center positive pin to the outside negative connection for polarity. So I'm going to kind of duck down here, get my solder right on this, and boom, got the center polarity, and I've got positive polarity, and I got the outside negative polarity. And I'm just going real quick, real quick. Clean my iron, and now I'm gonna work it again from left to right. I'm gonna connect my positive polarity. I'm gonna put a little bit of tinning on that first. So I'm gonna throw a blob on my iron here. Run that cable through there. Run my negative polarity cable through there, that blob of solder. You know, a lot of people that are better than me, they like to pre-tin all of their cables. But that's not me. I like to just, I like bad plans executed violently. I'm American. Not a mirror, maybe. I don't plan, I do. So I got the center connection there. One, two, three. And now I've got to do the negative connection on the outside. Gonna hook that up to the negative connection. One, two, three. It looks like we're all connected up. So the next thing you want to do is you want to get some sound through here. You want to just ensure that you get a good signal. You can cover one of these sound spouts at a time. Make sure you got your highs. Make sure you got your lows. You're always testing along the way in the process. Um, and uh, I would also say that now that you've got it hooked up, um, you want to just take a look at your solder work. And give it a little bit of, you know, don't be too hard. Just give it a little tug on the positive and the negative side. Make sure that you're all hooked up. The thing with these drivers is, and what, by little tug, I mean very, very lightweight tug. There are these solder pads underneath the solder that you've added to these drivers, and they will rip right off, and you will lose $50 in a hurry. <laughs> So just making sure that they're actually connected like this. One, two, three, four, five pulls. You're good. This is going to be a forever connection. You're set up. And on the, uh, the MMCX connector side, you just want to make sure that the solder has not bridged from the outside of the connector to the inner pull of the connector. And uh, so you're, this one looks like it's ready to roll. You're ready to hook up some acoustic tubing and start assembling your in-ear monitors. There you go. Thank you.